Tanner Tech. Tanner Tech. Tanner Tech. Tanner Tech. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. Instead, I'm going to show you my homemade vacuum tube amplifier. So, in my previous videos, you may have seen a vacuum tube amplifier that I made before. Now, this vacuum tube amplifier wasn't uh, pure vacuum tubes. It also had a few transistors inside it to drive the output stage. But this vacuum tube amplifier is all vacuum tubes. I have a 12AX7 tube and a 6V6 tube. And right back here is the output transformer. So how this works. Back here, I have all my power supply transformers. This transformer right here is uh, my power transformer. And pretty much what it does is it's a transformer with three primary input windings, one of 0 volts, one of 120 volts, and one of 277 volts. And it's wired in auto transformer formation. So that way, I don't have to have a transformer with a secondary winding of 300 volts. So what this does is it feeds the output into a bridge rectifier, which then goes through a uh, inductive choke then into a filter capacitor, then to the vacuum tube circuit. Back here I have the filament transformer that puts out 12 volts. The 12 volts feed the 12AX7 tube, and it also goes to a bridge rectifier and filter capacitor to a voltage regulator, or a buck, a buck converter, as many of you may know it as, which goes to feed the 6V6 tube, because I couldn't find a transformer with an output of 6.3 volts. This transformer up here is mainly to provide power to the cooling fan that cools the 6v6 tube. Now in looking at the faceplate you can see I have an audio out, audio in, a volume potentiometer, and a switch. So when you flip the switch it powers up the tube amplifier. It's just a switch that goes between the live wire of AC mains and the, all the transformers. So when you flip this everything warms up and you can plug your audio source into in and adjust the volume here and then you can plug headphones or, or other speakers into out and adjust it with the volume potentiometer looking back here I have my speakers out and as you can see it's just a speaker plug you can plug different speakers into it right now I have it plugged into the speaker cabinet that I built so in this tube amplifier the 12AX6 tube is the preamp tube and it feeds the preamplified audio signal into the 6v6 uh, power beam tetrode tube. And this tube is feeding the audio transformer, which sends it out to the speakers. Now, this tube amplifier is a single ended amplifier, which means it's not a push pull type. Now, to build this, I used a little metal chassis right here, and I added a piece of copper clad board underneath to solder all my connections to. Now to make the vacuum tube sockets, what I did is I took a piece of wood and I drilled holes in them according to the octal formations on the vacuum tube, as you can see in a previous video. And I connected all the wires to all the different connections on the board and to the different components. Now this is the schematic diagram that I made for my tube amplifier. Now the original schematic diagram that I looked at was one for the Fender Champ Amp, but as I was working on it, I realized that some of the formations of the components inside it were not working to my liking, and so I rearranged the components and made it work better. So over here in this section, you can see my three separate power supplies, one for the B+, one for the filament, one for the cooling fan, which feeds the 300 volts into the whole audio amplifier circuit. Now the volume, unlike the Fender Champ Amp, controls the grid bias of the 6v6 tube. For anyone trying to build a vacuum tube amp for the first time, I would highly recommend you use my schematic right here because it functions very good and it's easier to build than other schematics. Now to build my cabinet, I used plywood and wood and these uh, two inch wooden dowels. So pretty much what I did is I cut the holes for the speakers inside the front board and then I found two pieces of plywood that were the right size and I cut them down and I cut two wooden dowels to size for the back and I bolted it all together using wood screws and it all works pretty well and fits together. For the speakers, because my output transformer 
has a secondary coil impedance of 12 ohms. I had to take a 4 ohm speaker and an 8 ohm speaker and wire them in series so that way I can get the optimum output of sound and the least amount of distortion. Overall I'm pleased with how my tube amp turned out so now to test it. So as soon as I turn on the amp you can hear the fan turn on and you can see the tube filament starting to glow. So as you can see the 12AX7 heats up a lot quicker than the 6V6 which eventually warms up and you can see the tube filament here. Now the tubes usually take 30 to 45 seconds to heat up then when they heat up you can hear the slight 60 Hz hum coming from the speakers. So after you plug in your audio source you can turn it on and get some really loud music. Also, you can plug in another audio source, such as my electric banjo, that you'll see in my next Tanner Tech video. You can just plug it in, and hear it really loud. Another fun thing to try with uh, this tube amp is to hook up a piezo element to the audio input, put it in front of the speaker, and turn up the volume. You'll get some horrible high-pitched feedback that'll hurt your ears, but it's pretty funny. Ah. Yeah, another thing to note while building this uh, vacuum tube amplifier is never to connect the AC mains ground to chassis ground, because it'll short out your transformer. So, I learned that the hard way. I had the... AC mains ground ground into the chassis ground and because of my auto transformer configuration for my power supply it shorted out through the transformer this transformer heated up and caught fire which is not good so make sure when you're building this to not connect the AC mains ground which is right there to chassis ground one thing to also note if you're building a vacuum tube amplifier is the danger that's included now, because my auto transformer puts out 277 volts, and the bridge rectifier and capacitor step it up to 300 volts, this is very dangerous. So if you're working on this, always make sure to have your vacuum tube amplifier off and discharge all your capacitors. I learned this the hard way after touching this terminal right here, after not discharging the capacitor. I got shocked, and it hurt. So, for any of you building this, don't build it unless you have accurate electronics experience, know what you're doing, and have common sense and safety. Now if you're trying to replicate this tube amplifier and build it yourself, please check out my Instructables page. The link will be in the description soon. As always, thank you for watching and please subscribe.